Hi, I'm Matt. Today we're going to make this table. Here's how we do it. The project can be done using basic hand tools, but we will need a miter saw. For our materials, we're going to use pine banana wood, as it's known in the trade. Why is it called banana wood? That's the reason why. We cut 14 pieces at 22 and a half inches. We're making sure that we keep all the offcuts and we'll need them later. We're going to cut another 14 pieces of wood. This time the wood we cut is exactly the width of the wood shorter than the long ones we cut before, if that makes sense. We're going to join the pieces by putting a long one on top of the short one and gluing along this edge here. We're also going to sort of screw through for extra strength. We're using self-piloting screws and really good quality glue. Next, we stick all our chevrons together. We do this with plenty of wood glue and screw in straight through into each piece. We're going to cut all these jagged ends off here. So it's really important when you're screwing it together to make sure that the screws are well clear of this edge, otherwise it'll be the quickest way you've ever dinged up a saw. The offcuts we saved before, we're going to use these as the infill pieces for each end of the table. So again we're going to use plenty of glue and wood screws to hold all the pieces in together. Then marking out the ends and sides of the table. The boss man approves. To demonstrate how it can be done with hand tools, I cut two of the sides with a hand saw using a piece of scrap wood as a guide. The other two sides I use my track saw. Next I prepare the sides and ends of the table, pre-drilling and using plenty of glue. To cover the screws I'm using a plug cutter set, I'll explain this in detail later on in the video. I sand the top and sides of the table, working my way through the grits, firstly going across the grain, then going with the grain. So just when you've got everything perfect, some idiot comes along, sets fire to it. I'm doing this to really make the grain pop. I'm not saying we're a messy family, but I did apply five coats of varnish to this top surface. Now we're going to build the legs. I'm using a larger size of construction grade timber. It's essentially a 4 by 2 what's been planed down. The legs are made from 12 pieces cut to a 78 degree angle at the end. I've also got some 2x3 which is cut to the same angle again and these are going to be the cross braces of the legs. Using a handsaw and a chisel I cut out and chop out where I've marked the lines. This is going to enable us to form perfect mortises later on for the cross pieces. Apply plenty of glue to one of the leg pieces. 
Then I take one of the mortise sections and stick it on top of this glued piece. I secure the whole thing with a couple of standard wood screws, add more glue and then stick another leg piece on top and then give everything a clamp up. Once everything has dried, I give everything a good planing and a thorough sanding all over. Perfect, easy mortises. So, about these plug cutting sets, we use these to drill a pilot hole for our screws. And then what we can do is we can cut a wooden plug with a grain what matches approximately what we've drilled into, apply plenty of glue, stick the plug in the hole, give it a tap, cut it off, quick sand, Bob's your uncle, beautiful. I then painted everything with a combined primer and undercoat. For the top coat, I opted to go for a dove grey. I just felt as though it had better tonal qualities than going for a plain stark white. I attached the tabletop using standard wood screws. I'm not too worried about warpage because the wood is very dry and it's been acclimatised to the house. Oh, by the way, I also made two benches based on the same design. <laughs> 